Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the middle of the Major American Qualifiers. We are here with our day one of the American bracket. The playoffs are now underway. We are into the game. It is, of course, Dragneel going up against DC. That's right. The open qualifier from the open qualifier number two going up against Digital Chaos, who did not lose a single game during the entire group stages. Thank you for joining us here on BTS2 and, of course, the main BTS stream, who will be jumping in shortly. My name is Mott. I am the best at entering rings. Uh, let's let's talk about that for a second. Best at entering rings. Apparently not the best at staying. Listen, I was trying to finish my intro, and Draskal just comes up to me. I kicked Owen once, and then Draskal like, no, I don't think so. And then he just throws me out of the ring. Draskal did work. Yeah, he, he knocked did. out like eight people or yeah, something. He, throws he, you out instantly, too. So if you if you look it up based on time, him and Gurg stayed in the longest yeah. by far. And I think what Dr Slax was telling me was that he actually made LD, I think, one of the strongest. But what happened was LD had his ribs broken at the end, and then he got knocked out. So that's how LD should have won, theoretically, but it didn't happen still. Unbelievable, though. Huge props to Slax for putting all that together. So it's an yeah, unbelievable amount of work. Four days. It took four him days. four days to do that. A 40-minute video. And uh, when we first saw it, we couldn't believe it. It was actually the best thing ever. Obviously, Fog wasn't in it, which is, makes me sad, Yanis, that you weren't in there with uh, us. But It's okay. Want. You live, you learn. You'll be in the next one, I'm sure. That's cool. I don't mind. But we're into the game now, and this is, of course, our first round best of three. Um, there is a lower bracket, so loser of the series does have a chance to move on, obviously. On paper, Fog, I think the heavy favorite in this particular series is Digital Chaos. Yeah, I... I agree. I haven't really gotten a chance to watch these these guys any of the American games because I've been on like the backwards schedule. Yes. I caught a like the end of a bit of the DC games and yes. they looked quite dominant. Yeah, there was one. I did one DC series yesterday, both twenty minute games. They had like a thirty k advantage at that period of time, so yep. more than a k per minute, and uh, a lot of it was just due to that was versus Evernova S. And it just looked like they were checked out. Yeah, like, Evernova seems like they've been having – they struggled a lot yeah. during it. I saw that they were, like, I think 0-6 when I – just when I glanced, I didn't really get a chance to tune into their games. I mean, you, you saw UR drop his power treads at the end of one game, and just, like, that was it. And it's just like, ah, oh, man, a team of this caliber going down. But to DC, though, I mean, this team – People had questions, you know, their previous incarnation didn't do that well or didn't do well at all, really. Now, this squad is stepping up, and they are in the playoffs with an 0-8 record. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with Misery's captain. 8-0. 8-0. You said 0-8. Did I? You did. All right, well, I'm losing it, clearly. 8-0. They went 8-0, and and they absolutely dominated the yeah. group stages. But well, now, taking a look at the actual draft of this game, uh, something pretty interesting. How do you feel about that? The, the Earth Spirit Dark Sphere bands, I feel like that's a bit out of the ordinary. Yeah, you know, I never really think of Earth Spirit as that big of a threat nowadays just because of the boulder smash change and it's like I, I feel like it's really hit or miss honestly. it's very it's very like heavy uh, kind of I guess you can say like all in on the lane phase not right. entirely because you now have the Toma knowledge to help you secure your level yes. six which kind of I guess was a little bit of a problem but uh, with the nerfs like you were talking about he just he just doesn't feel nearly like that, that yeah. commanding force that it's, he was. It's hard to get that, like, surprise attack off. You really have to hit the rolling boulder and then maybe go for the boulder smash. You can't, like, initiate with boulder smash as much anymore as you yeah. used to. So that's Interesting the thing. that uh, DC actually, they go for the Fury on first instead of the Doom. So they're probably one of the few teams that aren't just taking the Doom first pick, which I think is, I, I don't know, to me that's pretty curious. We yeah. do, I mean, of course, we do see the standard Alchemist Bounty Hunter bands from Dragneel. And then they take Beastmaster Doom. And DC t just take the Fury on first. The yeah. Uh, is that something that they've been kind of just prioritizing? Well, Moo really likes this hero. Moo really likes this hero. They played it yesterday in their push strategy when they had like a draw and all that stuff. So that they might be thinking, okay, we can do some sort of push strategy here. We have Slaughter if we want to go for some early skirmishes. And it's also a deny pick because Snaking has been playing, like we saw, we talked about earlier today. Snaking has been playing the offlane. He's been playing the Nature's Prophet, the Beastmaster. He does get one of those heroes if they decide to put it in the offlane. Yep. But uh, Nature's Prophet for Moo, very comfortable on that hero. Let's talk about Moo a little bit because I think a lot of people that aren't familiar with American Dota might not know much about him, but I feel like he is one of those, first of all, he's above 7k in terms of MMR, which is important, I think, to a certain extent, and he is one of the up-and-coming offlaners, and I'm glad he's getting a real shot to play with a good squad, and I think he's going to do really well here. Yeah, me too. I really like how he does kind of things out of the box. He was one of the first people to actually kind of introduce the offlane slaughter, which yes. even though he wasn't really right, in the pro right, he scene, was, yeah. he was someone who was just constantly running and people were looking at him, and he was the one who actually did the force stuff instead of the blink dagger, yes. and people started kind of doing the same thing. That's so. a sign of a good offlaner, you know, inventing things. You know, Bulba, yeah. uh, universe to a certain extent, but he... Bulba invents everything. Yeah, I mean, Bulba does invent everything, offlane Elder Titan or whatever it was, mid lane on Elder Titan way back in the day. That was Bulba, but uh, we're well through the draft here, man. We are just screaming by. 
But uh, I want to talk about uh, Dragneel's draft a little bit because they go for the Sven. The, the, the first two picks, not that surprising. Beastmaster as well as Doom coming out. Um, that's not shocking. Those two heroes have been picked up a ton. But Sven coming out as well as the Crystal Maiden. What do you think about these two picks in particular? The Sven is... Uh I'm not I, like I said. I haven't really gotten a chance to w look at the, watch these guys too often, so I don't really know what they really like opt for the most. But the Sven kind of like, I can see why they picked it up versus the Slardar. Right. And, but the versus the Furion, we've seen, of course, you know, Sprout is extremely useful versus melee cores to tank them to kite them around. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it looks like a pretty. It looks pretty solid for them. The I think it's probably what they're more like comfortable on, I guess. And it also just gives them a bunch... Of, it gives them multiple options. They have like three beefy, tanky guys. They're yeah. just frontliners. Really good disables, too, coming out from all of their yeah. heroes for the most part. And Frontal Blade with a nice little <sighs> mini stun coming out. Um, I'm interested to see who's going to be heading the offlane because we saw Snake King play Beastmaster offlane yesterday. I would say that he's more than likely going to do that today. Um, they pick up the CM as well, and that means maybe probably roaming Doom, maybe in a four position. It's kind of curious because these are two heroes that could just, they can go in either lane and both either support or they can head into the, the off lane. We'll see if that's going to be the case for Dragneel. Yep, and they do, just quickly touching up on those third, fourth bands. No shocker to see them banning out the Enchi and the Chen. You know, Misery's been, um, I think he's played jung I think he's played junglers a lot of the games, and he's played a lot of Enchantress, and Enchantr his Enchantress is very threatening so yeah. it's not a shocker to see them ban those two out from yeah. him and now looking at the last ban we have void band from dragneel which i can understand of course it's not the most synergy with the slardar but people have been running a lot more of the slardar in the fr in the safe lane and yeah. just kind of like throwing the lanes all over the place and just kind of confusing their enemy yeah. dc with the invoker ban which you were telling me that Dragneel does kind of favor it, but they yeah, usually run HFN. it like... Si oh, they do run HFN, okay. Yeah, HFN is one of the best, if not the best, South American invoker. By the way, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Dragneel, it's a... I, I should clarify, I know a lot of you guys know everybody on DC for the most part, you know, pretty well-known names, but for Dragneel, uh, HFN, Brazilian player, I believe he's up towards 7 to 8k in MMR, very good good player. Um, he's been around the scene on multiple teams, I think including Pain for a long time. I might be wrong about that, I can't quite remember which team it was but mm -hmm. he's been around kyh of course the danish player coming out and uh, the story behind that is that uh and grant told me this is that he mason and him played wow together and mason just asked him to to play dota on a oh, team with him really so i guess that's how oh, it cool. ha i guess that's how it happened that's how things happen i suppose but that's that's really interesting that's a nice fact that is a lena pick we we have lena in the mid lane which we haven't seen i think really any of in this patch because mm -hmm. lena's just really rarely been touched i i can't and there's one game, I believe, in this qualifier that they picked it up for him. And uh, they obviously did win because they did go 8-0. But that's interesting to me that they go for it um, in this first game. They want to see what happens here. So I'm excited to see how they perform with it. Yeah, it's, uh, they picked two similar heroes as the last time they had the Lina. They had uh, the Witch Doctor and the Slardar. So focusing a lot on Disable, the Tuskar as well. Uh, they have... Or the Tusk, sorry. They have a lot of different ways of lockdown, different forms of catch, and Heavy Burst, as well as a mix of type uh, more so magical focused in the early game but then as the game kind of progresses you have a lot of physical damage potential from the amp damage plus of course you know fiery soul on lena and then yeah your fury on getting uh what do you think items. about their late game potential though coming out from digital chaos you don't have that that, that one uh, exact i mean you could maybe say slaughter in the safe lane is going to be that 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 core that helps them to the late game but does it really help is it like as good as a spend late game is, is what i'm trying to get at here they have multiple different forms, of course, so I think that it can be. Okay. Although they are up versus a Doom and a Beastmaster and a Venno, so they are versus like uh, the Beastmaster and the Venno give a lot of vision and also help defend uh, help defend towers, at least in the early stages of the game with the wards and with uh, axes and hawk, of course. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a pretty even type draft. However, I like the aggression that DC is able to pump out in their draft. If the uh, Tusk is able to make moves around all the time, he also gives that potential to uh, the Slardar to you know use the snowball as kind of that utilization instead of having a blink dagger, right. which you kind of need. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see how they do, but I I like this DC's draft even though they're up versus you know a Doom and a Sven and these very powerful heroes. Mid Venomancer, not something I've seen a lot of it because I should clarify that although most people know me as an American caster, I've been doing primarily. Uh, SEA games, and I have not seen Venomancer, which is very popular for teams like, I think, No Diggity and all those squads in, in Europe, and I think even in America to a certain extent. Uh, clue me in onto the Venomancer real quick before we jump into the game. Uh, it's It's been picked up a lot by uh, No Diggity, actually, so it just seems like it's it's a really safe pick, and it's strong. It, you can easily move to its lane and get ganks up, and it just it's it defends a lot of towers. It does an immense amount of damage, and it always g finds his farm. 
The only thing I'm concerned for is if the Tusk is able to find very good rotations. It's pretty easy kills on a Venomancer with a Lina Tusk. Yes, that seems like a killing combo that could absolutely wipe the floor with the Venomancer if they can get a good initiation. We'll have to wait and see. Can they keep him safe? Uh, going back to what we talked about in the offlane, it is going to be Snake King picking up the Doom. So he's going to be playing down there. He goes for the boots first. This means it is going to be a KYH Beastmaster. And we've seen what you can get done with this hero in the jungle. With an Iron Talon and a set of Tangos, even even giving one away, and the board change, the amount of damage it can dish out, you can get to level 6 by roughly 5 minutes into the game. Get a smoke and look for a kill, whether that's going to be in the safe lane, mid lane, or off lane. You could just find an easy initiation with Roar. Yeah. And uh, and like we talked about, there's so many disables on their team as well that th this shouldn't be hard for them to find a pickoff at that time. Yeah, I really like the approach that DC is doing, actually. They obviously know that this. they recognize the Beastmaster's going jungle because they saw the Iron Talon with the Train Scouts. So they know, obviously, he's going to be greedy jungling. So they're putting an aggressive duel slash tri lane to pressure the Sven and putting the Furion in a 1v1 versus Doom, which is, I think, their best bet of just... Uh, slowing down Sven because it, like we always see the Svens always want to go for that dominator and they just stack and farm the ancients and become that explosive uh, that explosive like over farm carry because you know Sven needs to have a good lead yes and now I it agree does look you. like Soxa is going for a courier snipe perhaps Let's see if he probably can on the it. way back he's gonna go for it yeah he's not on the bounty hunter which he would prefer to be on to get this but it looks like HFN oh, they're not at expecting least get the salve he's oh? gonna send it around can he find the initiation? They're going to send it the long way, and it looks like they'll Radiant keep it safe. And on the other side, the Radiance Courier is going to fall. It's sniped by a boar that by the Beastmaster. Huge. That's unbelievable. Behind the tower, it goes down close to the Tier 2 tower. That is unbelievable that happens this early on in the game. KYH is not even focused on juggling. He's more concerned about getting gold for his team, and he accomplishes it that immediately. That is super next level. They did not expect it at all. You can't even really see it on your mini-map. It's such a tiny little icon. So that's a really interesting approach that he did, which I think there's a there's actually an NA player who picks Beastmaster all the time, and he loves to do that. So that was really, really well played by KYH. You expected I th you I think a lot of people expected Soxa to be the one to to get the courier snipe, but it's actually going to be KYH, and so they'll get the extra gold going the way. Soxa is going to be a nuisance. He'll try to stop the the jungling of KYH, and we'll see what happens there. But just leeching experience for now, and it is going to be that aggro dual lane top like you were talking about. So. We'll keep things uh, close and, and see what happens in that top lane because there is going to be probably some battling at some point in time. But for now, it's just kind of annoyance of the jungle down bottom, that 1v1 matchup that we talked about, and the Nature's Prophet, Moo, takes the lead in CS early here. Yeah, and Moo, should, Moo should definitely win this, but Snake King should be able to farm just fine because it's going to push into his favor a lot because the trains are constantly aggroing the creeps. But he is going to be getting harassed constantly from Mu. Yeah, he does take the. He picks up the stout shield unsurprisingly as boots as well. So if he gets caught in a bad position, he should be okay. We'll wait and see. And they're going to turn this into a tri lane. D Ward coming out from Soxa. I think they placed one down for Clairvoyance. I'm not sure. On they actually, no, the Observer Ward is a little bit closer to the lane and it's going to get them vision of any s further aggression from Resolution. So. Oh, Resolution's getting so much XP here. Yeah, this is a huge creep wave coming in. And he should get some decent last hits from this. That's pretty nice. Rotating in Soxa, maybe looking for a snowball initiation. HFN's about half health, but he's going to back away knowing that something's up. He's going to see him, I think, with the Plague Ward, so Soxa is he just going to on the high ground. Yeah. yeah, he has a hill ward as well. But still, that, that you can't step up. You have to play very afraid, and you have to just use your wards to farm, yeah. which really, really limits you. As you can see, Weeha's got 16 and 4. Yeah, not a eight. great start for HFN, but when he gets more level into the Plague Wards, it'll be okay for him, and we'll see how things go in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just kind of a quiet game at this point. KYH decides to aggressively jungle. He wants to avoid that uh, Tusk as much as possible. And I really like the answer they threw out. Soxa just running at the Beastmaster and making sure he didn't get any free experience. Still, he's already level 3 on the Beastmaster. He's doing an okay job. He could use some regen, but he'll have to ferry it out. Yeah, he's got the courier. Walking through the river, actually. That's dangerous. That's quite dangerous. That is not a safe play, but it's going to be turned they into know, my courier. So. They know the supports are top, so... He knows that it's safe for him to do that. Yeah, he's he got the stout shield. This up ward too. is doing some serious work. Resolution Snowball, and they know it's coming. Mason, he's not war crying just yet. They want to get into tower range, maybe bait a stun out and see if they can find some tower hits, but that's not going to happen. Mason's going to war cry away. They have 30 seconds to try to make that play again if they do want to, because war cry is on cooldown. Again, that ward, though, is going to give them some good vision. Sox is going to walk up, and Clairvoyance is like, I am getting the hell out of here. That's the one problem for this lane, I feel like. Clairvoyance is not going to get anything as a support. In terms of experience, he's not going to be able to pull. He's he's really not doing much. Yeah, and he's skilled Nova, so he doesn't even have the frostbite to just bite up some creeps and get some farm and yep. levels for himself. 
Uh, they are exchanging this for farm for KYH, as we've talked about. And the Doom has actually eclipsed the CS of the Nature's Prophet. He's got 24 right now to the 21. So Snaking is having a great time. He's picked up an early ring of regen. See if he turns that into a headdress, or maybe he wants to go for Tranquils or something along those lines. Maybe get an early Vlads like we see on a lot of Dooms. That utility Doom. Yeah, it's good that Mu is denying a bit, though. So he's keeping up with levels with the Doom. This is a battle of just lane dominance. And right now, it's just who could CS better? Who could apply the pressure? Playing footsies for the most part at this point. Nothing's actually really happening. We'll see. Yeah, but DC is having a. They're going to TP in top. top. The cast is going to go. They might find the first blood onto Mason. He's going to pop the war cry. The sun comes out. They've got the Maledict. He should fall within two right clicks here. And it is going to be first blood going to the Witch Doctor as the last tick of the Maledict will go for Misery. And uh, just a smart play. They even get Mu involved. And he had his newly minted phase boots. Maybe that's what he was waiting for. He's got Nature's Wrath now as well. If he's looking for an extra kill on Clairvoyance, they'd have to die for it. But still, solid kill, solid TP coming out. Nicely done. Yeah, I, I love what DC is doing. They're doing basically exactly what they need to. Putting constant pressure onto the Sven. Now they're going to even pressure his tower. While the mid lane as well is going heavily in favor for Weeha. So their approach right now is pretty much perfect in this game. But HFN, do you feel like he can catch back up, though, with levels and Plague Wards? Is that something? I mean, you shouldn't be concerned about it now, but I'll hold that thought. I think they were looking for a gank bottom. Sox is going to be able to avoid it as Mu is still top lane. They, they really want to take this tier one tower, and they're going to get it without an issue. Yeah, that's pretty devastating. The Sven is now put in a really awkward position where he is in the off lane already, and he's got nothing. He's got boots and a magic wand. So it's, it's really awkward when this happens to you, and you're, uh, you're, you're like a like a Sven or something, because you have nowhere to really go now. Yeah. And I imagine at some point they'll take a look at that Ancient Stack for DC, and or DC will look at uh, Dragnail's Ancient Stack and maybe throw a ward down or just try to keep tabs on it as best as possible. Yeah. The one thing that is going the way, or rather two things, is that you have a jungling um, Beastmaster who is almost level 6. He's getting close. And on top of that, you do have Snaking who is level 6 as well. And he's getting farmed. He's got his Arcanes now. So that is uh, a couple of good things going the way of Dragnail at this point. Yeah, the Beastmaster is small change from this patch as well. The boars now do more damage to neutral creeps in the jungle, so he jungles a little bit faster, as well as it already being really quick. And now they do are making their first smoke rotation, and this is this, this is good, but it's also a problem. They 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 have to bring Mason somewhere, so they're bringing Mason in the smoking. Yeah, they they, they want to get him farmed, but maybe not in this way. If they get the kill, it might be fine though. They're gonna get off the Gale. They're gonna get off the Crystal Nova as well as the Frostbite. Easy pick up a TP rotation is coming in fast. KYH is gonna get caught. There's the snowball. It looks like he will be the martyr for the cause. The last right click will go, and they'll end up picking it up. It'll be a one-for-one one exchange, and it's going to be a Beastmaster for Alina. That is not the best trade, considering how farmed KYH is on that Beastmaster. Still, though, they do take down Weeha. Yeah, it looks like Clairvoyance might get caught out here. He's getting ran at, blocked Good ice by shards. the shards, and yeah, he's going to die. No mana for the Snowball, but Resolution's going to come in. Good Frostbite. Now he does. He sticks up, and they're going to use that Slithering Crush as well, and Claire is nothing he could do here. They actually stopped for a second. They really wanted to give that kill to Resolution. Nice play. And he is going to be going for that armlet first. Now mid lane, there's going to be the cast coming in. Can they bring him down? Laguna Blade, last right click. Good fairy fire, but the Maledict should take him down, and it will. Witch Doctor will grab the kill. Misery gets it done. He almost lived because of his infused raindrop. That was really cool. I really like seeing that item put to use. Yeah, and so a couple of quick kills exchanged. Dragnil, they got that one gank, and then... All of a sudden, the roaming potential, as you talked about, the Tusk getting involved, even the Slaughter moving around. They're going to start pushing again. They're going to bring in movement. Here's the Snowball Clairvoyance. You're a little too far up, my friend, and you are too squishy to deal with this. You have no move speed. You are Crystal Maiden. You're going to die very quickly. They'll rotate in a couple of heroes. Snaking's oh, going to be blocked in by a freaking creep as well as the Treant, and he can't find Moo. Moo has no mana for a TP, nor does he have a TP scroll. Snaking realizes he's still there. Moo will juke through, but there's the Storm Hammer. They're going to get a return kill with the Infernal Blade Shockwave, and Snaking will pick it up. The last right click going his way. Snake's doing very well for himself. Close, getting close to that mech already. Yeah, he pretty he much has it. When you saw those arcanes, I think you, you would have to assume it was getting mech from the get-go. But that's that's the one good thing going the way besides maybe the Beastmaster. HFN has caught up a little bit. In terms of net worth, he's only 700. I say only 700 behind the the mid Lena. So, But really devastating, man. Like. Sure, the gank worked with the Sven when they rotated him, but he, like, like I've been saying, he has nowhere really to go. He's put in this off lane now, and he's struggling 
really badly. He's got pretty much the same farm as his jungle Beastmaster. Yeah, this is, it's not great. He's gonna just sit in the jungle, try to find some farm. He has no treads. He's trying to get the Helm of the Dom first. Resolution, this is a hard this is gank. A big kill, though. He has an arm of the Mortigan, so it's gonna be tough to bring him down. They're gonna bring in the boar. God's Strength, there's the Infernal Blade. Good two man crush, but the roar comes out. Resolution dropped in place. Snowball save coming out. Beautifully done. They're gonna turn this. He gets the toggle off, and Snake King's in trouble. There's the Breathe Fire Rattler, the Dragon. Uh, Slave. I get the two confused so often. KYH is going to get cast up. Last right click will go, and it's going to be Misery getting the killing spree. What a save from Soxa with that snowball. That was on point. That was sick. That was like absolutely perfect. Yeah, perfectly done. I feel like Snaking should have just expended the Doom to ju just get the kill guaranteed, but I, they felt like they didn't need it with the Beastmaster, bro, which kind of sucks because you like when, when you have Doom and Beastmaster, you never really want to use both on the same hero to get a kill because then you're putting all your egg, all, all your spells on, on cooldown just for that one kill, and they end up getting no kills and losing two heroes, which is devastating. HFN will get room, but there's a smoke of deceit right behind him. The snowball's got to come HFN. in, and he probably knows that he's dead. I don't even think he's going to poison over for this. The he won't even get it off. He's going to get stunlocked permanently. He gets the Gale. Misery will take some damage, but nice smoke of deceit wraparound. DC are moving around the map so crisply. They're finding kills, they're finding towers, they're finding everything they need. They're shutting down the Sven. Yep. They're making sure HFN doesn't get too much tower damage on that tier 1 mid. This is looking like prime real estate for Digital Chaos at this point, Paul. Yeah, smooth smooth movements in the, uh, both defensive factor and in the offensive factor. The one move that Dragnail has really done so far in this game with their smoke rotation to bottom lane, not only does it not pay off in that they don't get the kill, but they don't even get any damage really on the objective. So yeah. that entire smoke rotation was kind of just a wasted time by Dragnail, which is very unfortunate for them and just... It's just looking uh, pretty pretty dominant for DC at this point. It's a ward pretty close to the Tier 2 tower mid right now. That's going to scout out the movements of both Snaking and Clairvoyance. They get it behind that Tier 1 despite not taking it. This is the biggest tower, I think, that DC want to take. Yeah, and they'll be able like to get it pretty soon. Yeah, and it looks like Weeha is going to be going for that Bloodstone that we saw him do the other day, first item as well. With the new change, the 12 charges, it's pretty good. I think once the nerf hit a while ago, it was not great. But meanwhile, they're going to find a Snowball Initiation, Soxa. He's, he's trying actually, to bail he's out. He's trying to get out, yeah. Yeah, he snowballed the neutrals trying to run away, but he, he might still get caught up on here. They have Doom ready to go, but nope. they're not going to go for it. Scorched Earth, they, they just didn't have the catch ready to go. KYH was getting slowed down by that Frozen Sigil, so nice play with that snowball and escape coming up from Soxa. Well, Dragneal is absolutely feeling the pressure. This Dire Squad is running together as three, four heroes running through their jungle. Not even, you can just feel the disconnection in them right now. They do get Mace in his Helm of the Dominator, but you look at where he is in net worth, and it's... It's not particularly great. I mean, uh, those those heroes, you could call them three cores with the KYH Beastmaster. They're all right together. The Doom yep. is the only one up there. Meanwhile, Moo looking for the TP in and try to find that courier, but they juke it back, and he won't be able to get it. He's got to TP away. No punish there coming out. Dragneal smoke up as well in their own jungle. They saw the Clarence smoke. Nicking. The Observer World was able to scout it out, I believe, and so they know something's happening. They're going to all back up behind the towers. DC are ready for this. And might walk up with Soxa. Instead, he decides against it. Weeha is going to go and get a Dragon Slave on the Creep Wave and then probably back afterwards. They scan beautifully from DC on top of where they're moving. That is a great scan coming out from Digital Cast. I mean, they knew the smoke was coming, but to scan at that particular area was pretty sick. It's, I guess it's a bit obvious, though, because like the, the bottom wave is pushing in so heavily. Nobody's farming it. Nobody's farming top. They don't see anybody in the jungle. They had seen the initial smoke as well. So I feel like that's probably the the most obvious place that they could go unless they like run all the way through the bottom river going for the slaughter but that's such a such an awkward movement to run that far because yeah. the smoke will run out before you even get there probably so for now Dragnil will have to rely on nice read, though. on the doom and the mech I guess uh, to, to do a lot of the work in these engagements maybe a good poison nova but it feels like DC have done everything they need to do to take this game further and to be able to at least build upon this lead uh, what do you do as Dragnil though I mean you have to try to find farm for Mason but he's struggling in that regard they, they needed to. They needed that first smoke to really work. They need to try to do it. They need to just try to pressure the safe lane tower and get wards in the enemy jungle and just have more awareness of where DC's heroes are. And now it looks like HFN getting set up on the mid lane. They're gonna TP in with Moose Sprout. It's gonna miss, but he gets the Trance off, kind of cutting off the path of retreat. And he's gonna get some TP help. Maybe they can turn this and find a kill. Moo did pop the drum charge. This is gonna be so hard to chase down. They can't even catch him. Dragneal snaking, still looking for and can't quite get it in time. That's going to be that. HFN, they, they'll keep him alive. They have to expend a couple of TPs, though, but at least they, they keep him safe. But now down bottom, Slytherin Crush, KYH, Death Ward. See you later. He tried to get the roar off. That was not going to save his life. Amplified damage plus Death yeah. Ward plus all that good stuff is, is pretty scary. Blink so. just finished on resolution there, so that was perfect there. But, uh, yeah, Dragon needs to consistently keep stacking up their Ancients every time, which they actually missed, I think, two stacks just now. And then... Uh, 
try to at least put some pressure so that the Sven can get some farm because they aren't really alleviating the pressure off of him still. Sven is not getting any room to work with. Mason, a fantastic carry player, just not having the start that he'd like. They put a lot of pressure on him top lane, able to kind of continually apply pressure elsewhere. He's finally going to head back to the jungle. And they're just looking for farm and kind of getting choked out at this point, especially if they start losing these tier, this tier one tower mid. But HFN is doing his damnedest to just put all these plague wards down. They're gonna, making a smoke yeah, they're ready to go. This is the blink initiation, the blink reveal. HFN's going to get caught with the Slytherin Crush, the Snowball, an easy Walrus Punch, big pick up for resolution. They're going to clean up the Plague Wards as well and force down this tier one tower with Muti being in, throwing up the Treants and, and getting it done. And then they pop the Jump Charge too to make quick work of it. They do use the, at least they use the Glyph, but this is still a very big tower. So many access points that you can achieve from DC now with that tier one tower. You can invade the jungle a lot easier. You have real easy access to the secret shop of Dragoniel's side as well. And now they can contest these Ancients even easier as well. So. Oh yeah, having all three tier ones is hugely beneficial toward them. Not only for map control, but for that economy war. So now they are sitting at about five, five and some five thousand and some change net worth difference between DC and Dragoniel. And you can just you can just kind of feel that from the way that they've been moving and just the flow of this game. Not even if you look, if you don't even look at the kill score, you can just you can feel DC just having that advantage. Yeah, DC. Showing them why they went 8-0 in the group stages. Showing everybody that they are a very good squad not to be trifled with at this point. And uh, they'll back up and they'll just farm for now. They, they don't feel the need to put pressure on the Tier 2s just yet. They might wait for the, what, the next set of items. Maybe make another smoke play and go from there, I think, for DC. I don't know if they're really feeling too much pressure at all for mostly anything. They're pretty much ready to fight all the time. They don't really have any like long cooldown ultimates except for the Laguna, which is only one minute. The Laguna and the Fear and Ulti are both pretty much a minute long. So they're probably not feeling too pressured. They can just make moves naturally as it comes to them when they see the map information. And now they spot five people in the mid lane. So they're just going to sit the Tusk and the Lina there and spam the waves out while the other p heroes just farm up. Looks Misery like will TP there as well, but Resolution is going to continue to farm bottom. You're absolutely right. And then move will just split push top while this is happening. Yep. There's no real threat. And, and Dragon will know this. They're going to back up. They're like, okay, this is a waste of time. Sitting mid is five with them knowing is, is not great. So they won't accomplish anything. By the way, talking about what you said earlier, the uh, Bloodstone is done for the Lena. I think it was done a while ago. So Weeha is having a great time. He's already got 1,000 gold on top of that. Anything else in the Courier? Aether Lens for Misery is already going to be out. So yeah, he's got it done. He has a full Aether Lens now on the Witch Doctor, plus a Wind Lace for that move speed. Yeah. Huge. DC is just going to, like, like we see a lot of people do with like, Furion most of the time, they're just going to force the lanes in and then with Based on the opportunity, they're gonna they're gonna seize the fights, depending on where people are standing and how many how much information they get on the map from when the waves are pushed in, and then probably with like a pick or two, and maybe if it is a fight that's near a tier two, they net a tier two, and then they can go straight for that Roshan with the amplified damage. Yeah. I mean it's it's pretty cut and dry, I guess, if you look at it for DC side. This is standard Dota at this point for where they're at in the game. KYH will find an Invis rune. He's uh, as good as he's been doing. He's still just at the Necro one. Maybe you'd like to be at Necro 2 at this point. Uh, Necro 3 if you're very, very far ahead or at least a little far ahead and you get a good advantage. But he's sitting on Necro 1 right now. They do pick up the Doom Blink Dagger, so Snaking having a pretty good time at the very least. Again, he's the top of net worth for his team. But here comes the pressure on the Tier 2 bottom with everybody from DC nearby. Resolution's going to scout things out towards that Ancient Stack. They towards need, yeah, Dragon wants to fight bottom. They're just they're getting ready for the smoke. Resolution. He's going to break it, and he's going to blink right away, away immediately. Just good positioning from Resolution, and he's going to back instantly and with the rest of the squad. There's no reason for them to fight this at this point. They don't have to commit too hard, especially with Mood just TPing top lane. Yeah. Opportunity fights. Just wait till the lanes are pushed into a proper position. So, like I was saying, the information game, as long as they if they see Dragneel rotate like four heroes, there's no reason for them to take the fight yet. They can just wait and farm up. They know that they have a very large advantage at this point. And as as we've said and other people kind of know, Sven, when he's equal or even like less farm than another carry, he's behind. Yes. He always wants to be ahead in farm at least at least like one item ahead of the other carry. 2k maybe, 2 to 3k yeah. I, uh, net worth in terms of actual farm would be where Mason wants to be, where he's actually at, is a little bit behind the nation's profit, 500 net worth behind him. He picks up a Blink Dagger instead of going for that SNY or Echo Saber that you usually see on the Sven. So he's going to have to use that instead. 
to find initiations with his team. And that, that's a good thing because I really feel like they were lacking a, a good blink initiation. Or, you know, they have Snowball on DC's side to, to roll in. They didn't even need a blink dagger for Slaughter, but he's got it now. So now they have this Fen with a blink dagger and a Stormhammer at the ready. So they have chance for a catch. And they are going to find somebody. It's going to be Claire, and he's going to get Slytherin crushed to death. The Roar trying to get the counter initiation, but KYH is alone. This is not really their fight at this point. If they can bait them into this fight, they can look for it. But Sox is TPing away already. Snaking. Oh, nice TPing in the trees He had Sensor Conqueror stomp, but it wasn't going to hit in time, I don't think, anyways. And while this is happening, DC's just applying pressure top. They force out the glyph. They're happy with it, and they back away. DC poking and prodding wherever they can and finding a kill in the process. Whew. Yeah. Woof is right. It's just looking... It's really hard for Dragno to really do much. They can't even really get the Doom off. I don't think we've seen a single one yet this game, right? I don't believe so. The, 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 the one I thought they were going to throw was the one on the, the on slaughter the bottom, yeah. like you talked about. That's not happening. Yeah, so, I don't know. DC is just doing a really good job of not giving them the opportunities to take any of those fights. All right, well, HFN, he does have a Veil now. I mean, they, they do pump out a decent amount of magical damage. Yep. So, theoretically, they... They're not far, DC are not far enough ahead where they can they can take a five on five team fight. You know that's not on their terms. You know if they get jumped on and they get forced into a fight, maybe around the Roche pit, they get like five man poisoned up with a veil on top of it. That could be the beginnings of a comeback for Dragneil. But right now Dragneil are just looking for anything. Yep. And DC just they don't even seem like they want to press their advantage in any or like in a press their advantage in an aggressive manner. They're just like they're just farming like all over the place. Sox is farming mid. Resolution's farming every single ancient camp. Weeha is farming every single neutral camp while Mu pushes out the two side lanes. And then Misery's just kind of like chilling, walking around. And like, you know, there's not really anywhere for me to farm, guys. I'm just, I'm just a witch doctor. I mean, he's got an eighth lens. I'm not sure. He, he's farmed pretty well, things considered. Yeah, but not like farm, not creeps. You know, he's farming yeah. like heroes and making movements and stuff. Yeah. So. That's where he's getting his farm from. Misery farming those heroes like crazy. He's actually almost the same net worth as that Beastmaster who was in the jungle. So that's how you know that's a problem. But what are you going to do? Looks H like DC is trying to starting to want to put a bit of pressure into the enemy jungle. Maybe get another new ward down there. Yeah, I mean, once that tier two tower is gone, especially the tier two tower mid as well. If you get both of those tier twos down, it feels like you can't even really leave your base for Dragneil if there is vision in that jungle. If if DC puts some wards down, you're not really going to farm there, and that means you can't really farm anywhere. Uh oh, Claire! Oh, blink ahead. Over blinks, but Sox, still uh, get him. should still find him with a snowball and will, and they'll get the warrior's punch off. So. It's a bit awkward, but they get the kill nonetheless. They are pinging out Wii. Can they chase him down? They're going to get the roar off here. They've got Doom ready if they need it. There's the Sensor Conqueror stop. They're not going to commit to it, and that's a big kill. They'll lose their Tier 2 tower more than likely. They could try to contest this. There's no Glyph. If they had Glyph, they could definitely fight this, but Resolution will already take it down with Moo's help and back away together. They're looking to jump in. Here comes Snaking. He's got the Sensor Conqueror stomp. Sox will get doomed up. I think you just leave if you're DC at this point. Just cut your losses and run. They've got Blink Dagger for Mason in 10 seconds. He's got the signs. He's got the Warcry move speed. Good stun. Slaughter initiation. They're trying to turn this. Sensor Conqueror stomp. Now the Veil comes out. Poison Nova. They get the mech off. KYH will fall first. Everyone getting low. Misery getting Snowball saved up. So they're crushed out of two. Snaking will fall. Laguna Blade. Weeha's back into the fray and they're going to find HFN. He's already respawned and he's good to go. Four dead on the side of Dragneel. Weeha getting back in without even having to use a buyback. Just based off sheer timing. And they take everything. Good thing he went for that farm build. He went for the boots of travel after the bloodstone. Pays off instantly. He dies. He comes back into the fight almost instantly with the boots of travel. Picks up some kills. Gets his bloodstone charges back up. And now he's already level 16 on that Lina. So a bit of an over chase by Dragneel. But at this point, they kind of have to do that. They need to get these kills to come back in this game. Yeah, and I mean, that, that could have been maybe a turning point. It was looking not great already, four versus five, or yeah, four versus five for for DC, but then Lita just comes in with that low respawn time and it's all over. So just really great patience for them to back up, kind of try to fight and stay alive. Good snowball saves from Soxa, obviously. Misery did yeah. go down in the end, but still it was really good stuff coming out from DC. It's a crazy amount of sustain, even though like, sure, Dragno wasn't able to really get like a lot of spells off in that exact engagement except for the Veno ult. Like they got the Doom and everything, but they weren't like on top of them and getting like a CM ult or something like yes. with the Beastmaster ult and everything all combined. So the Witch Doctor heal combined with Tuscar Snowball, as you said, was just really well used defensively. And yeah, just the item advantage at this point really showing there. Oh god, Weeha's looking for a solo pickoff and he's gonna find it really easily. Yep. He's I mean, no Aganim Scepter necessary. He's, he's got the level 3 ult at this point, so he just destroys him with that hot toward lightning from from the Lina. Nicely done there. Yeah, dealing with a 2600 HP Slardar 
as well on the front line is just super difficult for Dragno. Yeah, God, every time I see this hero, he does work. I've seen it in SEA, I've seen it in America. I just, I, I understand why teams are banning him first phase now. I would not be surprised to see Dragneal do the same. But if you give, if you ban him, then you give something else away to DC that they're confident, whether it's, you know, Weha Alchemist or something like that, it's tough to deal with. Yeah. You gotta pick your poison. Exactly. For Dragneal, it's, it's not looking good right now. Net worth wise, there's an advantage of 14,000 for Digital Chaos. Experience, it's 15. So, I don't know what they really can do at this point. They have to hope to get a good spend stun off into a freezing field. I mean, they have to get that dream team fight, I feel like, somehow. But Or even just a pick or two in, into maybe a tower or something. But that just seems so difficult. There's a heart now on Resolution. He has, without his armlet on, without it toggled, he has 2,800 HP. Not to mention he's got 17 armor. He's going to be above 3k with the armlet toggle on. Yeah. That's that's DC's go time. They're they're ready now. They've got the heart, they've got their mech, they've got the Yules and the blink finished on the Lina. They're ready to get a pick off and go for that base push. Oh god, they're about to run right into Snake King. He's going to Yules up. LC is going to go on time. They're going to get the Sleuthing Crush. There's going to be the Laguna Blade. They snowball in as well. They don't even need it. He's dead by the time the snowball gets there and melts. HFN will get off the Venomous Scale. Ice Shards will hit, but he'll have to just go around. LSA does hit. They don't have detection, they have no vision on the high ground, excuse me. They do, they're just going to work with Weeha. Pop the veil up onto him, but there's no way they can counter-initiate at this point. They're going to just keep pushing and, and pressuring you to get this tier 2 tower in the process. And Soxa picks up a mech too. I think he, I don't know if he had it last fight actually, but he's got it now. No, he did not. He, he picked it up after that. So yeah, more sustain, more armor, just everything they need to break the high ground of Dragneal. It's looking like it... I guess it was predicted. DC, 8-0. They're looking to be 9-0 in this tournament so far. Uh, Still being disciplined, though. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to just force like a mid lane tower and have something like crazy go wrong for them. They're just going to keep playing the economy wars, pushing their lanes in constantly, taking the opportunity fights. This might be a time where some players would clown around, maybe think they're far enough ahead that they can get away with things. But Weha has been very, very... Very conservative in his build and his play. I mean, he's, he's gotten kills, but he hasn't been picking, looking for picks every five seconds or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, he's been playing with his team. He's done a great job so far of, of keeping up the lead. And he is top in the net worth, and it feels like it feels like Resolution should be top for how much he, work he's done, but he's doing pretty well for himself as well. Yeah, DC's doing a good job of the economy game. They're making sure to farm the Ancients again like they were before, pushing out the lanes like I was talking about as well, and then just getting, getting as much farm as possible on all their heroes. Sven will com finally complete his S and Y. I'm not sure how much that's going to provide him. He's now about 2k behind the next closest, which is the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet has a Maelstrom at this point, now picks up an, a Staff of Wizardry. Um, they did take Roche recently, I believe. The Aegis was given to Lina, Lina unsurprisingly, because you're not going to kill Resolution in almost any situation, I feel like, at this point. Yeah, wiz me, uh, sorry. Misery also picks up a pipe now, so they have that much better force to be able to break the high ground versus the Ven ults because they have, not only do they have the 10% resistance, the AOE resistance that comes from the pipe, but of course the activatable spell block. I mean, they've got everything they, they need now. They have they have an Agative Scepter, they just need to clear out the... There's not even any Outer Towers to clear out. They've already cleared out the Tier 2s. I thought there might have been one more left bottom, but it's already been taken care of, and so... They have everything they need, realistically, at this point to either split, wait a little bit longer, then go for a push, or just push right now, one of the two. Yeah, they're just suff they're really suffocating Dragneal, keeping them in their base. We see, yeah, look, Resolution draws the line, just drawing it across their base, and he's like, they're just in their base, yeah. they're not farming yeah. at all. We're absolutely free farming, we're in no, we're in no real rush. This is like the most complete game, you talk about complete games, you know, in, in other sports, this is like the most complete game of Dota that I've ever seen from a team, at, at least in the NA qualifiers or in, 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 like in the NA region. Like, they're just playing so well together as a squad. Yeah, super precise. Yes. They don't want to make any mistakes. They want to show people, you know, put the fear, instill fear into people's hearts. Yeah, this team looks playing. extraordinarily strong right now. If you're whoever's going to be playing up against them next, which is whether it's F FDL or uh, Shazam, this it, and Shazam notably usually has their number, but this is looking like a very good team. A very good team right now for DC, and the game is not over yet. I don't want to imply that it is, but with the amount of a lead they have, uh, there would have to be a gigantic team fight in Dra Dragneal's favor. A little bit of a throw from DC for this to be even close to being evened up at this point. Yeah, I feel like DC, in order for Dragneal to really win a fight, DC has to make some very big mistakes in the way they take the fight. It's kind of crazy because there's not even BKBs out for DC. It's like the one assured item you get to, to clean up the game, and as I say that, 
Slaughter's picking his up. Yeah, he's almost got it. They might even just wait for that. May wait for the next BKB on the Slaughter. Wait for the next... Sorry, I said the next BKB. Wait for the BKB on the Slaughter and then wait for the Roshan and just get that. Unless the opportunity comes to them where Dragneel wants to fight outside the base. The Venomancer and then, you know, of course, they have basically free reign on taking those I weapons. mean, I, I, at some point they're going to get into self curiosity with how well they're farming anyways, which is going to help in, in that regard too. So, yeah, I, God. You have okay high ground defense, I think, with what they've got, but it could be better. Yeah, it's, they have decent high guard defense, and DC doesn't have, like, incredible high ground breaking. They have Furion, who does, like, little DPS and stuff from, from distance, as well as the Lina. But no one who really just smacks that tower. I guess the Slardar can at this point, because of how beefy he is, but... Yeah, that's the thing. They would ideally want a nice pick off on, like... Ideally, the Venomancer, and then, you know, of course, they have basically free reign on taking those I weapons. mean, I, I, at some point, they're going to get into self curiosity with how well they're farming anyways, which is going to help in, in that regard, too. So, yeah, I got... Yeah, I wonder who's going to pick it up, though, because... Does Slardar have room? Slardar's going for that BKB like you were talking about, and Moo went for eggs and four stuff. I think he's got two slots, uh, assuming he gets spots at some point. And he can get uh, AC with one of those slots, I think, for Rezo. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, though. Yeah, I'm not sure if we'll see the the game go for another, what, 6,000 gold that he yeah. needs for that AC. Yeah, that's the thing. Are we actually going to make it to that benchmark? Mm -hmm. Not looking like it for Dragneel. Speaking of AC, Sven has picked himself up a Hyperstone. Moonshard or AC, one of the two. We'll see which one it is. Probably an Assault Kuros to deal with the Amplified Damage to help out at least a little bit. Doom is going to be picking up what I imagine to be either a Shiva's or Lotus. And we'll wait and see what that's going to be. And there's that BKB. It's been picked up. It's ready to go for Lina. Or excuse me, for, uh, for Slardar. This is, this is just... It's not flashy, you know. Nobody's going, oh, wow. I mean, Sox has made some really cool saves. He made them beautiful saves. Yeah, he that made snowball in the bottom lane yeah. is like MVP champ stuff yeah. right there. That that probably, if they get that kill, this could be entirely different, this game. They get that kill on resolution. They stop him from farming. Maybe they get a, another kill. They rotate mid with, like, another smoke, or they take a tower. Yeah. Which, by the way, have not lost a tier one. I, I talk about a complete game. The only thing that could be more complete about this is if resolution... They stop him from farming. Maybe they get a, another kill. They rotate mid with like another smoke, or they take a tower. Yeah. Which, by the way, have not lost a tier one. I, I talk about a complete game. The only thing that could be more complete about this is if it was zero kills for Dragneel at this point. But yeah, the, the few kills that they have are, I mean, kills that pretty much should have happened. It wasn't really DC making a mistake. Maybe the only one I think that I can think of is Weeha making the rotation. Eight. But he got caught, you know, making the rotation to his team, so you can argue that it was just a nice move from Dragneel. I mean, that, that, that death eventually catapulted them into a team fight top lane that got not net, net them four kills. So, yeah. so you I can think he's okay with it. Yeah, exactly. Taking a look, yeah, 20,000 20, plus net worth lead and ex gold and experience lead for DC. I mean, there's just not much you could do. They're getting their items. Finally, the Beastmaster, he has to pick up the Necro 2 after going for an early blink. They thought, we need so much catch. We need it. We need that blink stun. We need that blink roar. And it is not coming to play at all because of how passive DC are playing. Yeah, one minute, 20 seconds for that Roshan. Can they keep this up for an entire series is the question. DC is, they're actually so patient though. I'm, I'm really surprised to see how patient they're playing. I think this has a lot to do with Misery. I, I, I feel like it has to be. Is this something that they've been doing? Oh, we might be seeing actually a big engagement here. Resolution ready to break the smoke and yeah. he it right away. Misery is just gonna be able to get back with Resolu Resolution's blink timing there. And now Pretty they're good. Gonna they're gonna look to re-engage now too. They're trying to find a fight. Resolution is going to be sprinting ahead. He's got his blink off cooldown. Ooh, good plague ward slow, though, and Resolution won't be able to find anything because of it. I don't think they would have been able to, to initiate anyways, but... Yeah, they would have needed Moo to TP, like, really far in the front, but the TP was actually used already. All right. Choked out is the correct term. Blink, Slithering Crush, KYH caught out of position. He gets oh bashed God, twice a third damage. time. Dear Lord. I think that was three bashes. Maybe he's just that strong against KYH. He's paper thin with amp damage up. HFN, he's like, I just saw what happened. I don't want to deal with that. Moo's like, I'm, I'm helping, dude. I'm ulting for... Oh, he's dead already. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to just go just straight high ground. It. They jump in onto Mason. Another bash comes out. They've got the Laguna. Death Ward will go through, and Mason falls quickly thereafter. He is dead for 66 seconds, and that is They're it. Just they it just there. GG straight out. What an unbelievable game from Digital Chaos. 20-4. to four.
the game ends. But Literally, yeah. no mistakes made. Very few, if any, mistakes made in this game by Digital Chaos. Ball. So I was gonna ask you, like, is this is this something that DC's kind of been playing? Have they been, have they been playing very, very extremely patient in their games, or is this kind of an exception? Well, think? the two games that I was able to see that I was able to cast personally. They were both 20-minute games, okay. so they're like putting pressure on, but they're also they weren't in any hurry to to push to end the game. They they made sure they had that advantage, or they kind of just forced the other team to GG out maybe before they wanted to. So, I guess so. I feel like they've been playing pretty. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I said complete before. Discipline. Discipline yeah. is definitely Cohesive. the exact word. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just all coming together at the perfect time. There was a yeah. lot of questions about this team coming into this particular tournament, like DC, eh, I mean, it's a new roster, Europeans playing together, you know. You have to remember, though, Misery and Weha are major champions. Yep. They won a major, and they have a extraordinarily strong surrounding cast. And up-and-coming player, Saxa. Yes, Mu as well, yep. I think, to a certain extent. And Dragnail is not a bad team. They came through the open qualifiers. They were able to get top two. They beat some good teams in Group B. Uh, I believe it was Group B. Yep. So... That, that's just outstanding play from Digital Chaos in this first game. Can they keep it up for game number two is the question, Fogged. I guess we'll find out. We will find out. We are going to hand it back over to the Hub in just a little while. I'll take a quick commercial break beforehand. But, of course, my name is Mott. With me is Fogged. We're in game number one of DC versus Dragneel. Game number two coming right around the corner. Stick around, guys.